Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the work required to pump the water out of the spout where we have this tank right here, this kind of triangular prism tank. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, full of water and we're going to have to figure out the work required to pump all the water out through this spout. So I've already done a couple other videos about how to find the work required to pump water out of a spout. And in my first one, I went into quite a bit of detail, so I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. If you want to check that one out, though, you can click up at the top of your screen, and that'll take you right over there so you can check that out. But let's show you how to get through this example here. Before we jump into it, though, I do want to just say real quick, the reason I'm showing you how to do this type of problem is this is actually one of the formulas on my Calc 2 study guide that came out recently. There's a link down in the description if you want to go check that out. It'll take you to where you can go download that right away. It's available for instant download. It's only a couple of bucks. It's very affordable, but it should be a huge help to you as you work through calculus two homework, study for tests, anything related to integral calculus topics. So I definitely recommend checking that out. The link is down below. Well, let's jump into this problem here. So really when you're doing these kind of work problems, what you want to think about is the water in the tank made up of a bunch of infinitely thin layers. So you kind of want to think about you know, this basically having like a layer of water going, you know, throughout the whole thing. And that, that layer is basically an infinitely thin rectangular prism. So basically what we want to do is think about essentially the work required to lift each individual layer. And then what we're going to do is sum up all those different works required to find the total work required to get all the water out of this tank. So when we're coming up with the equation to get this all kind of set up the first thing we want to do is think about the volume of each layer of our water so this layer that i kind of sketched here is just an example of one of the layers obviously this tank being full of water you could think of it as a bunch of infinitely thin layers kind of stacked on top of each other going up throughout this tank so what we want to do is think about the volume of each individual layer and what we want to put that in terms of essentially is you know typically you would see it as xi star and with that xi star usually you you know you can kind of name it whatever you want and you can uh, adjust your equations accordingly but typically i think the easiest thing to do is basically just call your xi star the distance that you have to pump that layer of water so in this case we're going to pump it all the way up to the top of the tank and then through this spout so basically we're going to go from the tippy top of the spout here where the spout comes out down to whatever layer we're on and that distance is going to be called xi star so you can imagine as we go through this tank and pump down the different layers our xi star is going to change depending on how far this layer that we're on our ith layer is away from the top of the spout basically how far that layer has to be pumped up so now when we think about creating an equation for the volume of the ith layer of water what we want to do is think about the volume of this infinitely thin rectangular prism layer of water. So remember the volume of a rectangular prism is just length times width times height. So what we want to do is kind of break down those different dimensions of this rectangular prism. So basically we'll say that, that this length here is going to be our length. So you can see with this shape specifically, it's eight meters back in length. And that's going to be true no matter where we are in this tank, whether we're at the very top layer, the very bottom layer, or anywhere in between, the length of that layer is going to be 8 meters. So we can basically say that the length in this equation is 8. Now what we need to do is figure out the width. So you can see the width is a little bit different. The width at the very top of our tank is much wider than the width at the very bottom of our tank. So what we need to do is come up with an equation in terms of xi star, which tells us the width of the ith layer of our tank. If we think about this tank, just looking at it from the front, so just looking at it from this angle here, it would look kind of like this, right? And if we imagine our ith layer here, wherever that happens to be, we want to come up with an equation for this width right here in terms of xi star. Well, xi star, goes all the way up to the top of the spout, which is actually going to be two meters even above the top of our tank here. So I'd say the easiest way to think about this basically is that the width of our ith layer, since these sides are straight lines here, 
right? As we go down through our tank, our width is going to decrease. It's going to shrink, right? Because it's much wider at the top than it is down at the bottom. It's going to shrink in a linear fashion. And the reason is because the sides of this are perfectly straight lines. So what we can kind of do is set this up as a linear equation. And if we figure out two points, basically, that go through this linear function, we can use those to figure out the linear function itself. So let me explain a little bit more what I mean by that. Basically, we can see here that when xi star is two, so when xi star is two meters, that puts us at the top of our tank here, right? Because xi star measures the distance from the top of the spout down to whatever layer we're on. If we're at the very top layer, we're two meters from the top of the spout. We know that because the spout is two meters long. So we can basically say when xi star is two, the width of our tank at that point is three meters, right? We know that that's three meters. So basically we need a linear function which goes through the point two, three, where two is our xi star, three is the width of our tank or the output of this equation that we're trying to come up with. Then if we go down to the very bottom of the tank, the very point of this triangle, there's no width there, right? The width at that point is zero because it comes to a single point. And our xi star at that point is going to be five because we're five meters from the top of the spout. We'll have to go up through the three meter tank and then up through the two meter spout, making x be five. So basically we need a linear function that goes through these two points, two, three, and five, zero. So to do that, we can use just kind of the general form of a linear function where we have y equals our slope, which is m, times x minus x0 plus y0, where x0, y0 is some point that lies on our linear function. To figure out our slope, we can use the equation m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, basically rise over run, right? The amount of the distance you go up over the, the distance you go over to the side. So we can use these two points to figure out our slope that would connect these two points. So doing that, we would take y2, which is zero, minus y1, which is three, over x2, which is five, minus x1, which is two, which gives us zero minus three is negative three, over five minus two, which is positive three, so our slope is negative one. So if we put m equals negative one, so our function y equals negative one times x minus x zero, where x zero is just any point that goes through this, this function here. So let's just say we'll use this first point. Actually, let's use this second point because y, y being zero is gonna be a little easier to use. So we'll get x minus our x, which is five, plus our y point, which is zero, so that's just zero. So this would be our linear function that would give us the width of this layer, depending on this x, which actually I should say would be like xi star, not x. But we can simplify this, giving us negative x plus five. So this, if we change our x to xi star, would be the width of our ith layer. So we can just take that and put it over here in our volume equation. For the width of our ith layer. Okay. And then we need the height of our ith layer. Well, the height of each of these layers is just going to be delta x. That's just kind of the standard, um, you know, basically delta x just means the, the distance between each infinitely thin layer as we go down through this tank. So our change in x is our height negative xi star plus five gives us the width of each layer and then eight gives us the length of each layer. So multiplying length by width times height gives us the volume of our ith layer of water as we go down through this tank. So now once we have the volume of our ith layer, we need to figure out the mass of each layer. So the mass of our ith layer of water is just gonna be the volume times 1,000 
kilograms per cubic meter, which is just the mass of water. So if we take the, the mass of water times the volume of water in each layer, that should give us the mass of each layer. So a thousand times this would just give us 8,000 times negative xi star plus five. So then once you have the mass of your ith layer and or your equation for the mass of your ith layer, we want to then figure out the force acting on each, each ith layer. So to find the force, force is just mass times gravity. Gravity, when you're working in metric system with meters and kilograms, gravity is just 9.8. So if we take 9.8 times this ith mass, that would give us the force acting on the ith layer. So 9.8 times 8,000 is 78,400. And I also realized that I forgot my delta x. So we'll add that there too. We'll keep all this stuff the same. So this gives us the force acting on your ith layer of water. Once you have the force, now we can figure out the work required to lift the ith layer up to the top of the, the spout. So this is the equation that's on my Calculus 2 study guide. And again, the link to go grab yourself a copy of that is down below in the description. That equation is that work is force times distance. So if we know already the force acting on the ith layer, all we have to do is multiply that by the distance that we have to lift that ith layer up, which is exactly what our xi star represents. So all we would have to do is multiply force times xi star to get the work required to lift that ith layer up. So if we just take this equation times xi star, that gives us 78,400 xi star times negative xi star plus five times delta x. Now that gives us the equation for the work required to lift the ith layer. Now what we have to do is set up our integral, which would represent the total work required. Basically all that's doing is adding up each ith layer, the work required to lift each ith layer up, and that would give us the total work. So to do that, all we really have to do is think about the range of different xi star values where there's actually water sitting. So notice, since our spout is two meters long, an xi star tells us the distance from whatever layer we're on up to the top of the spout, the water doesn't actually start until our xi star gets to two meters. Once we get xi star equaling two, all the way to the bottom of our tank, which would be three meters further down, which gives us xi star of five, that's where all of our water is. So basically all of our water exists where xi star is between two and five. So what that tells us is when we set up our integral, we want the bounds of that integral to be two and five. And then all we're gonna do is integrate this over those bounds. However, what we want to do here is basically change, uh, you know, this xi star and this delta x uh, are just kind of a notational thing that is, uh, you know, kind of in terms of um, a context that makes sense with saying like, you know, the work or the force or mass uh, corresponding to our ith layer of water. But now that we're not really concerned about the ith layer specifically, whatever that i may be, what we can do is just change xi star to x and change delta x to dx, which is actually makes sense in the context of an integral. So that really is just a change of variable, kind of a notational thing, but we're gonna make that change here, giving us this integral. So I'm not gonna go through exactly how to integrate this function. Um, I'm sure you can do that on your own, just using the power rule. Um, but if you do evaluate this integral, that should give you 1,058,400 and the units on that is going to be joules so that would be the total work required to lift all the water out of this tank I've got tons of other videos on my channel to help you get through calc 2 material and including my calc 2 study guide so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos and together i'm sure we'll be able to get you some good grades in calc 2 thanks and see you next time